All right, so let's talk about the water cycle. Um, so I have this diagram here. I think it's a pretty helpful one. Um, so we're going to talk about six main steps of the water cycle. It's basically the same six steps you guys went over. Water cycle can be you can it can be really simple or it can be really complicated. So there's lots of steps of the water cycle that we're not going to touch on. We're just going to touch on the main ones. Um, and when I talk about the water cycle, I could start by talking about any step because it's called a cycle. So it go, it comes back around. But I'm just going to start with the ocean, or maybe this is a river, because it just kind of seems like the natural place for me to start. So here we have an ocean or a lake or something. Uh, so the first step of the water cycle is just to get water from a water source into the air. Um, and we didn't really have time to talk about it yesterday. We're, we're going to go over states of matter. But in order for this first step of evaporation to occur, um, what do you think the water needs to get into to turn into water vapor? Yeah, it needs energy from the sun. So there, there are two main sources of the water cycle. Sorry, there are two main sources of energy for the water cycle. One is the sun's heat. I'll get to the other one in a second. So the sun's heat causes the water in, the, in this source of water to evaporate. It gives it the energy it needs to go from being liquid water to water vapor. Remember, we can't see water vapor. That's called evaporation. Evaporation is when uh, liquid water becomes water vapor. There's another form of evaporation. This one is called evapotranspiration. Uh, you, we can just call it transpiration. I'm pretty sure our textbook says transpiration. Uh, did anybody read about transpiration? What happens there? Go ahead. Exactly, yeah. So water is it's the same evaporation process, but it's taking place in the leaves of plants. Which is pretty cool, and you think that might be bad for plants, for plants to lose their water, but it's actually, yeah, tree, any kind of plants, including trees, right. It's actually good for the plants. The plants need to do this. So it's part of the photosynthesis process because plants want to absorb carbon dioxide. In order to absorb carbon dioxide, they have to give up water. And actually, it's a, for every one molecule of carbon dioxide, they give, give away about 100 molecules of water. So it's a big trade, but they need to do it. So that's called transpiration. That's when uh, plants willingly give up their water in order to absorb carbon dioxide to make sugar. All you need to know is that transpiration is basically evaporation inside of plants. So that's two ways that we can get liquid water to go to water vapor, like from a water source like the ocean or a lake or from plants. Um, so now we have a bunch of water vapor in the sky. And we talked about what happens next, uh, about, about how clouds are made. Which one of these processes do you think is the name for how clouds are made? Which one of these processes do you think? Not precipitation. So condensation is the next step. Condensation is when water vapor goes to becoming a liquid water. So evaporation is liquid water to water vapor. Condensation is water vapor to liquid water. And remember, that's when we said that it takes some dust particles. Water has to find something to stick to in the sky in order to make a cloud. So evaporation is liquid water becoming water vapor. Condensation is water vapor going back to liquid water, which means that clouds are not made of water vapor. They're made of liquid water. So when you look up in the sky, clouds are made of the same stuff that comes out of your faucet. It's liquid water, tiny drops of water. So uh, the really high clouds, the ones that are wispy and really high up in the sky are actually made of ice crystals. So clouds can be made of either liquid water or ice, but never water vapor. Uh, so like I said, like these really high wispy clouds where it says freezing right there, those are usually made of ice crystals. It, it is really hard to look, but nobody looking because a lot of the rain that we get actually starts as snow. But as, by the time it comes down to the app, to the ground where it's warmer, it melts before it can hit the ground. So I couldn't tell you, maybe an earth scientist could, but um, 
So now we got clouds in the sky, either they're made of ice crystals or liquid water. Uh, what happens? So, and in, in, in these clouds, what happens is that these water droplets like to get bigger. They like to collect more friends and combine with each other and get bigger and bigger. What do you think is going to happen when they get big enough or too big for that cloud? Yeah, that's when the rain starts. So the, my question to you guys is, what? why do you think water droplets stay in the sky at all? Why don't they just fall down right away? Why do they have, why do they have to reach the green size? So gravity is what pulls them down. What keeps them up? That's a good guess, good guess. I, Yeah, so it is a combination of temperature and heat and lots of other uh, processes, but it's basically what uh, meteorologists call humidity. Have you guys heard of that term humidity? If you're if it's a summer day and your and your forecast says it's gonna be 100 percent humidity, what do you expect to feel like when you go outside? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so it's not just hot, it's like sticky, that muggy feeling. What you're feeling is that all that. There's a lot of water droplets. There's a lot of liquid water in the air, and that that conducts heat to heat your skin a lot more readily. Um, humidity is the air's ability to hold on to water. So 100% humidity, the air can hold on to a lot more water than 30% or 0%. Yes, yeah, more yeah, more times in the summer than the winter for sure. But even at 100% humidity, those water droplets can only get so big before they fall down. Which brings me to the second source of energy for the water cycle, which is the Earth's gravity. The reading doesn't mention that, is that there are two sources of energy. One is the sun's energy to make the water turn to water vapor, but in order to get the water to come back down, you need another source of energy. Oh, really? Really? I might have edited that, actually. I might have put that in there. So yeah, so when water falls down as the, in the form of ice or snow or rain or hail, sleet, that's called precipitation, which is not to be confused with another form of precipitation if you take my geology class. But precipitation in this case is water falling from the sky. Okay, so we got evaporation, water becoming liquid water becoming water vapor, condensation, water vapor becoming liquid water. Sometimes it freezes in the sky. Precipitation, that water goes back down. What happens after the water comes down? What do you guys think? Where does that rain go? Yep. Yep, so there's two different answers there. It, it can be either one. They can eat, the water can go into the soil or it can go straight back into the water source. Yeah, plants. So if you have water that goes into plants, soil, whatever, if it gets soaked up by something, that's called infiltration. Infiltration is when precipitation gets soaked in by the land or maybe plants. Uh, runoff is when rain goes straight back into the water source. Sometimes it skids across the soil a little bit, or sometimes it just falls right back into a lake or a river or something. That's, that's called runoff. So runoff is right back into water so source. Infiltration is into the soil or into a plant. Now, the funny thing about infiltration is that even though it's soaked up at the ground, Eventually that water will find its way back to a water source because that water doesn't just stay on the ground. It actually sinks through the ground and finds its way back to a river or an ocean. It might take a hundred years, but it'll eventually find its way back. So if you're having a percent water, millions of years. So how do they get Yeah, so exactly. Yes, yeah, so you see the good question. The question is, this is the water cycle so, which means that the water you drink has been cycling through the atmosphere and animals and plants for hundreds of years. So, how does it get clean? So, you know, we have water treatment facilities. So, they treat the water and clean it that way. But once you, once when water evaporates from the ocean, for example, the ocean water is salt water. And so, when water evaporates, you don't have salt water evaporating, you have water evaporating, but the salt gets left behind. And you can try this at home too. If you take, uh, if you just like make a little salt water solution, put it into a skillet, let it boil, the water will evaporate, but you'll see that the salt is left behind. So the six main steps of the water cycle we went over were evaporation, 
transpiration, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, and runoff. You guys have questions about what those mean? Yes. Runoff is like a, if it rains really hard and the soil doesn't have time to soak it up, sometimes the water just runs down a hill and into a river, which takes it into the ocean eventually. Yeah. Yes, Kajana. Infiltration is when the land soaks up the precipitation. Like a sponge. Um, mudslide is when you got a lot of dirt that soaked up a lot of rain, and usually there's like a cliff or a hill, and the, the slope is too steep that the hills become so heavy that it just kind of topples over. As far as I know, yes. Sublimate, yeah, so we're not going to talk about sublimation. Sublimation is when you have ice or snow that goes directly to becoming water vapor. And you guys, and you can kind of see this if, there, if there's very low humidity and there's snow on the ground, sometimes you'll see that the wind just kind of kips, kicks up that snow and the snow looks like it disappears. It's sublimation. Well, it's, it's when ice goes directly becoming water vapor. It skips, it skips the liquid water phase. That, it, there has to be very special circumstances for that to happen, but it's not uncommon. Um, low humidity. Remember, humidity is the, the air's ability to hold on to liquid water. And uh, the temperature has to be high enough to where the water doesn't want to go back to freezing. I'm sure there's other air pressure. I think the pressure has to be right too, but yeah. Any other questions about these steps, the water cycle, or maybe something you read about? All right, it's okay. That's how I know you're here.